I am running to be president for all of America, not half of America, because there is no victory in winning for half of America. So tonight, with faith and devotion, I proudly accept your nomination for President of the United States. Thank you. I'm not supposed to be here tonight. Not supposed to be here. Yeah. I went to the stage and the crowd was cheering wildly. Everybody was happy. I began speaking very strongly, powerfully, and happily <laughs> because I was discussing the great job my administration did on immigration at the southern border. We were very proud of it. <laughs> Behind me and to the right was a large screen that was displaying a chart of border crossings under my leadership. The numbers were absolutely amazing. In order to see the chart, I started to, like this, turn to my right and was ready to begin a little bit further turn, which I'm very lucky I didn't do, when I heard a loud whizzing sound and felt something hit me really, really hard on my right ear. I said to myself, wow, what was that? It can only be a bullet. And moved my right hand to my ear, brought it down. My hand was covered with blood, just absolutely blood all over the place. I immediately knew it was very serious that we were under attack. And in one movement proceeded to drop to the ground Bullets were continuing to fly as very brave Secret Service agents rushed to the stage, and they really did. They rushed to the stage. These are great people at great risk, I will tell you, and pounced on top of me so that I would be protected. There was blood pouring everywhere, and yet, in a certain way, I felt very safe because I had God on my side. This election should be about the issues facing our country and how to make America successful, safe, free, and great again. In an age when our politics too often divide us, now is the time to remember that we are all fellow citizens. We are one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we must not criminalize dissent or demonize political disagreement, which is what's been happening in our country lately at a level that nobody has ever seen before. In that spirit, the Democrat Party should immediately stop weaponizing the justice system and labeling their political opponent as an enemy of democracy. Especially since that is not true. In fact, I am the one saving democracy for the people of our country. And very big news, as you probably just read. On Monday, a major ruling was handed down from a highly respected federal judge in Florida, Eileen Cannon 
finding that the prosecutor and the fake documents case against me were totally unconstitutional, and the entire case was thrown out of court. With all of that publicity thrown out of court. If Democrats want to unify our country, they should drop these partisan witch hunts, which I have been going through for approximately eight years. And they should do that without delay and allow an election to proceed that is worthy of our people. We're going to win it anyway. <laughs> Under our leadership, the United States will be respected again. No nation will question our power. No enemy will doubt our might. Our borders will be totally secure. Our economy will soar. We will return law and order to our streets, patriotism to our schools, and importantly, we will restore peace, stability, and harmony all throughout the world. But to achieve this future, we must first rescue our nation from failed and even incompetent leadership. We have totally incompetent leadership. This will be the most important election in the history of our country. Under the current administration, we are indeed a nation in decline. We have an inflation crisis that is making life unaffordable, ravaging the incomes of working and low-income families, and crushing, just simply crushing our people like never before. They've never seen anything like it. We also have an illegal immigration crisis, and it's taking place right now as we sit here in this beautiful arena. It's a massive invasion at our southern border that has spread misery, crime, poverty, disease, and destruction to communities all across our land. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. Then there is an international crisis, the likes of which the world has seldom been part of. Nobody can believe what's happening. War is now raging in Europe, in the Middle East. A growing specter of conflict hangs over Taiwan, Korea, the Philippines, and all of Asia, and our planet is teetering on the edge of World War III. And this will be a war like no other war because of weaponry. The weapons are no longer army tanks going back and forth, shooting at each other. These weapons are obliteration. It's time for a change. This administration can't come close to solving the problems. We're dealing with very tough, very fierce people. They're fierce people. And we don't have fierce people. We have people that are a lot less than fierce, except when it comes to cheating on elections and a couple of other things. Then they're fierce. <laughs> then they're fierce. So tonight, I make this pledge to the great people of America. I will end the devastating inflation crisis immediately, bring down interest rates, and lower the cost of energy. We will drill, baby, drill. I will end the illegal immigration crisis by closing our border and finishing the wall, most of which I've already built. On the wall, we were dealing with a very difficult Congress. And I said, oh, that's OK. We won't go to Congress. I call it an invasion. We gave our military almost $800 billion. I said, I'm going to take a little of that money, because this is an invasion. And we built most of the wall is already built. And we built it through using the funds, because what's more, what's better than that? We have to stop the invasion into our country that's killing hundreds of thousands of people a year. We're not going to let that happen. I will end every single international crisis that the current administration has created, including the horrible war with Russia and Ukraine, which would have never happened if I was president, and the war caused by the attack on Israel, 
which would have never happened if I was president. Iran was broke. Iran had no money. Now Iran has $250 billion. They made it all over the last two and a half years. They were broke. I watched the other day on a show called Deface the Nation. Has anyone seen it? <laughs> and they had a congressman who was a Democrat say, well, whether you like him or not, Iran was broke dealing with Trump. I told China and other countries, if you buy from Iran, we will not let you do any business in this country, and we will put tariffs on every product you do send in of 100 percent or more. And they said to me, well, I think that's about it. They weren't going to buy any oil. And they were ready to make a deal. Iran was going to make a deal with us. And Inflation has been a killer for our country. No matter what you make it, it doesn't matter because inflation is eating you alive. People that were putting away money, they were making great wages, the highest they've ever made, but they were putting away a lot of money. Now they are just being destroyed. They're not putting away anything. They're barely living. They're going into savings accounts. They're taking out their money to live because of inflation. Inflation, remember, it's called a country buster. You can go back to Germany from 100 years ago. You can go back to any country that suffered great inflation. We've suffered the worst inflation we've ever had. But go back and see what's happened to those countries. We've had the worst inflation we've ever had under this person. But in less than four years, our opponents have turned incredible success into unparalleled tragedy and failure. It's been a tremendous failure. Today, our cities are flooded with illegal aliens. Americans are being squeezed out of the labor force and their jobs are taken. By the way, you know who's taking the jobs, the jobs that are created? 107% of those jobs are taken by illegal aliens. And you know who's being hurt the most by millions of people pouring into our country? The black population and the Hispanic population because they're taking the jobs from our black population, our Hispanic population, and they're also taking them from unions. The unions are suffering because of it. Thank you. Thank you. I like you too. Thank you very much. Inflation has wiped out the life savings of our citizens and forced the middle class into a state of depression and despair. That's what it is. It's despair and depression. We cannot and will not let this continue. Less than four years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. We're going to be a great nation again. First, we must get economic relief to our citizens. Starting on day one, we will drive down prices and make America affordable again. We have to make it affordable. It's not affordable. People can't live like this. Under this administration, our current administration, groceries are up 57 percent. Gasoline is up 60 and 70 percent. Mortgage rates have quadrupled. And the fact is, it doesn't matter what they are because you can't get the money anyway. You can't buy houses. Young people can't get any financing to buy a house. The total household costs have increased an average of $28,000 per family under this administration. Republicans have a plan to bring down prices and bring them down very, very rapidly. By slashing energy costs, we will in turn reduce the cost of transportation, manufacturing, and all household goods. So much starts with energy. And remember, we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other country by far. We are a nation that has the opportunity to make an absolute fortune with its energy. We have it, and China does it. Under the Trump administration just three and a half years ago, we were energy independent, but soon we will actually be better than that. We will be energy dominant and supply not only ourselves, but we will supply the rest of the world with numbers that nobody has ever seen, and we will reduce our debt, $36 trillion. We will start reducing that, and we will also reduce your taxes still further. Next, and by the way, they want to raise your taxes four times, think of it, 
And all my life, I grew up watching politicians. I always loved politics, I guess. I was on the other side. I'd watch the poli and they were always talking about, we will give you a tax cut. We will give you a tax cut. We my whole life, I was watching, I will give you a tax cut. Right, Mr. Congressman? That's all they talked about. This is the only administration that said, we're going to raise your taxes by four times what you're paying now. And people are supposed to vote for them? I've never heard it. You're paying too much. We're going to reduce your taxes. Still further, we gave you the biggest one, as I said. We're going to give you more, and it's going to lead to tremendous growth. We want growth in our country. That's what's going to pay off our debt. We will not let countries come in, take our jobs, and plunder our nation. They come and do that. They plunder our nation. The way they will sell their product in America is to build it in America. Very simple. Build it in America and only in America. And this very simple formula, and Congress has to go along with us, and they will. This very simple formula will create massive numbers of jobs. We will take over the auto industry again, and many, many hundreds of thousands of jobs. We lost so many jobs over the years. If you go back 20, 25 years, they've stolen going to China and Mexico about 68% of our auto industry manufacturing jobs. We're going to get them all back. We're going to get them all back, every one of them. At the center of our plan for economic relief are massive tax cuts for workers that include something else that's turned out to be very popular, actually. Here it's very popular, this building and all those hotels that I saw that are so nice. I'm staying in a nice one. It's called No Tax on Tips. No Tax on Tips. No Tax on Tips. I got that by having dinner recently in Nevada, where we're leading by about 14 points. Hello. I'll see you there very soon, everybody. And we're having dinner at a beautiful restaurant in the Trump building on the Strip. And it's a great building. And the waitress comes over. How's everything going? A really nice person. How's everything? Oh, sir, it's so tough. The government's after me all the time on tips, tips, tips. I said, well, they give you cash. Would they be able to find him? She said, actually, and I didn't know this. She said, very little cash is given. It's all put right on the check. And they come in and they take so much of our money. It's just ridiculous. And they don't believe anything we say. And they've just hired, as you know, 88,000 agents to go after them even more. And I said... This shows the level of my, you know, most people go out, they hire consultants, they pay millions of dollars. But I said to her, let me just ask you a question. Would you be happy if you had no tax on tips? She said, what a great idea. I got my information from a very smart waitress. That's better than spending millions of dollars. And everybody, everybody loves it. Waitresses and caddies and drivers and everybody's a large large group of people that are being really hurt badly. They make money, let them keep their money.